think, that, I think, I think more importantly, though, is I got to work with these gray beards at NASA and the Air Force. I got to work with some great people in industry. Did you say gray beards? Gray beards, yes. Mm. Do they have beards in the Air Force? I thought they make you shave. Yeah, well, the civil servants have okay. beards. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a pretty, pretty lax military if everybody's working around with a beard. So I tried to be a very good student of those older folks that had seen a lot more things than I had in my career. So give us a minute. We don't always have engineers on the show. It's mostly scientists. And for what it's worth, anytime people say to me, oh, you guys are doing great things in space. I say, look, we know what we want to do, but we don't know how to build the stuff. There are engineers who you never come interview who enabled the James Webb Space Telescope, who enabled the Hubble Telescope. And so I just want to, on record, give a shout out to nameless engineers who are make the scientists for the success of everything, of, of, of everything, and make the scientists look good. But you, you only see the scientists get interviewed because they're talking about the results of the experiment, right? And whereas the engineer is not in that loop. So I think that's awesome that you're doing that. And two, that's the best part of my job. Is like I I know engineers that got degrees that never really became engineers because they never got to actually experience an idea that you actually have to go build, and it needs to work. And then I work with people every day, some of which that don't understand that engineering is sometimes an art form because you don't know all the things you have to uh, design around the uncertainty. Mm. Like if you came to me with a new spacecraft system, I'd say, yeah, that's theoretically possible. Now let's go see what we can actually build 